Digico's Stealth Digital Processing not only offers an unrivaled amount of extremely low latency processing, but also the ability to reconfigure its processing every time it's powered up. But how does that help us in the real world? Well, let me explain. Although the general mixing functions between theatre sound and live sound are similar, there are some significant differences in the way the console parameters are used. In theatre, this can be as simple as how VCA grouping is used and changed through a show right the way through to the changing of channel settings and having this ripple up and down the show in real time. And this is all before the cast members are switched out at a moment's notice. These operational differences mean the way a console's processing is allocated needs to be tailored in a specific way for each production. Digico's software extension allows just this. The FPGA core is programmed on PowerUp, allowing the user to decide whether the console should boot as a standard touring console or a theatre-specific application. Unlike DSP audio engines, the FPGA-driven engine can completely change its structure on PowerUp. This enables our users to take advantage of a wealth of dedicated theatre features available to mix the most demanding Broadway and West End productions. At the heart of the theatre software application is the alias, a method of controlling channel settings on the desk from queue to queue. As characters and costumes change, sound designers need to be able to make changes to settings, EQs, auxes for example, and have those changes automatically update through the show. While this might sound complicated, we've made the actual operation pretty simple. There just isn't the time during tech rehearsals to spend hours fiddling with complex programming tools. So let's have a quick look at how it's used. On the SD9, I'm going to open up the queue list. We can see here we're in Q1, and importantly, I have auto update pressed, and this allows the mechanism of auto updating through the show to occur. And then I'm going to flip over to look at some channels, and we're going to use this Bob channel as our example here. If I dial in an EQ, so we're just going to put something nice and obvious in, a big top end boost, without actually updating any cues manually, as I fire down the show, and this is like pretending I was running the show, you can see that the EQ hasn't changed. So if you imagine Bob comes onto stage at the beginning of the production and there's something wrong with his mic position, you need to put a bit of top end into it. As you fire the cues in the show, you need that top end to stay where it is. His mic position is bad for the entire show. So the auto update system has made the change and allowed that change to ripple down the show meaning you don't have to worry as you fire the next cue that it's going to revert back to the old setting. But the auto-update system is much more powerful than that. Beyond this simple example, let's open up the setup panel for Bob um, and open up the aliases panel. So now we have our single alias Bob at the moment. and Let's make ourselves a new alias. Let's imagine a costume change. So uh, we're going to use just a change of filters and EQ and we're going to call this one Bob Hat. So again, we have a, a costume change. And that requires a different EQ. So let's put a different EQ in for this. Um, let's put a, a, a nice cut in so we can see it. So here, in this queue, we have one EQ for Bob Hat. In the previous queue, we have Bob Standard EQ. And every time Bob appears in his hat, we can come into the aliases panel and pick the correct version of him and you can see it brings in the right EQ. So it doesn't matter where you are in the show, you can guarantee that the right settings, the right channel settings, whether it be just an EQ and filters or aux sends and dynamics as well, or in fact every element of the channel can change, that you have the right settings at the right time. So this as a tool allows designers to cope with a wide range of changes. Small EQ changes that might be necessary due to bad mic position due to more structural changes that are a result of character changes from scene to scene. In addition to the alias system, the theatre software provides the tools to cope with changes of cast, alternate actors or understudies. In many shows these days, where there are younger members of cast, operators have to cope with nightly changes, and with it, the changes of channel settings that go with it. You imagine every person has their own EQ and other personal settings that makes them unique. The Digico Players tool allows operators to select which actor is playing a particular role. 
and the production is then automatically updated with all of the correct settings, but without destroying the specific programming that you've made from queue to queue. Let's have a little quick look at this. Um, on the master screen, I'm going to open up the players panel. This is where we can manage the players for each of our characters. And we're going to stay with Bob here, the one that we started with. Now, at the moment, there are no players. This is a single person playing this role. But let's introduce a couple of actors that need to switch between this role. So I press the new button and I'm going to put my name in as the first actor playing this role. And then I'm going to make a second actor for Bob and we'll call it Richard. And by selecting here on the right hand column the, the red triangle to Richard, I've made Richard the current actor. So if we look at the channels on the screen, I can make the adjustments that I need to make. So let's uh, change the top end a little bit and put a bit of bottom end cut in. This is for, for the Bob Hat character, but Richard's version of it. And if I go to Bob again, I can make the same type of change. And he has his unique settings. But on a particular night, if it's me playing it, Dan playing the Bob role, on the master screen, I come up and select Dan to be the right player. And then when we fire the cues on the channels, you can see that the correct EQ is recalled for my version of Bob. So it's a very powerful tool to allow an operator without having to worry about presets and copy and pasting EQs in, just to select the correct player at the top of the night and the show is automatically updated with all of the correct settings. If this wasn't enough, there are a couple of other features that are unique to the theatre software. A key part of programming any theatre show is the VCA membership and how it changes from queue to queue. Now, normally an operator would have to program each queue one by one. And this can be a slow process when we're dealing with hundreds of queues. The theatre extension overcomes this by providing a graphical interface to programming VCAs or control groups. And this actually allows for faster and better programming. On the master screen of the console, I'm going to open up the control group queues panel. Now down the left hand side of my list of queues, this could run to hundreds of queues for a large production, and coming across the right I have cells that represent the membership. So I have a visual map that I don't have to worry about firing each queue and checking the membership. I can see on screen how the membership changes from queue to queue. If I select control group one, scene one, I can use the assign panel down the bottom of the screen to pick which channel goes in. So I select Harry and that actually puts Harry into control group one to VCA one for the entire show. And then I can work my way down in queue in scene three. This might change to the man character and you can see it changes it and ripples it down through the show. So it very quickly allows me to build a map of my VCA changes. Remember theatre, it's all about what's under my VCAs from the operator's point of view to make the smooth running of the show repeatable on a night by night basis. And finally, but by no means least, we add in matrix nodal delays. Individually recallable delays on every single matrix node. On SD7 this equates to over a thousand individual delay settings. And then normally an operator would have to look to an external piece of equipment for this kind of power. But why do they need it? The human ear uses both the level of the sound at the ears and the time difference between the ears to localise sound. This is known as the Haas effect. As sound designers strive to make realistic and complex soundscapes, they use both level and delay changes to position sound reproduction. It might be a prop speaker on set, or the need to make the audience believe the sound originates from a specific position on stage. But whatever the reason, the matrix nodal delays makes the job much easier and quicker. If I open up on the master screen my standard matrix, this is my standard cross point level matrix that we see on every Digico desk, and I can dial in by selecting and using the touch and turn my sends to my matrix feeds, my left, my right, my PA, my, uh, my balcony feeds, whatever it might be. But in addition, on the theatre software, we have a delays button. And this allows me to access those individual cross point delays. So on each of the delays, I can choose both the level and the delay element of the send, allowing me to take advantage of that harsh effect 
and position the sound on source exactly where I want it. So again, I can just select the cross points on screen and dial in, switch on uh, a delay. So it's very quick and easy to use. So there you have it, Digico Theatre Specific Application Extension. No matter how big or small your production, from regional theatre using an SD90, right up to the biggest West End and Broadway productions, an SD70, give yourself the right tool for the job.